evening, ladies as well as gentlemen, Papa Boris here with some more Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. In the previous video, I created my party for the five-player Rejax playthrough. Now, to make this playthrough a little bit more interesting, I'm actually going to play on Heroic Difficulty, which means I should give you a warning. I am going to lose scenarios. 100% guaranteed I'm going to lose sometimes. So if that doesn't bother me, I don't care. But if it bothers you, uh, then, you know, just wait for Adventure Deck 3 to be released and, and watch um, me continue my playthrough with the Dream Team, the six players, which I have a pretty decent chance of being able to win the whole thing without ever losing a scenario. I mean, I might play wrong and mess up or really get really, really bad luck, but that is one where if you want to watch me win, watch that one. This one is going to be losing. But I do want to show off the um, heroic difficulty at some point and just show how hard it is as well as how it changes the game. So when you play on heroic in this digital version, one thing to keep in mind is that you get uh, slightly different scenario rules. Now, for a Brigand Doom, they went pretty easy. They kept this benefit of drawing a card after recharging a card to a monstrous power. If I were designing heroic difficulty, I would have just taken that out and left no during the scenario rules in it. What they did instead is that when you acquire an ally, discard a card. There's not that many allies in the scenario, and it's not that big of a deal. So this is this is this is going pretty light. Some of them get pretty brutal. This one's not too bad. There's also one wild card power. This will always be here. Heroic scenarios always have a wild card power, and wild card powers are just like an extra little bitch slap that you get during the scenario that makes things harder. Might make it harder to pick up boons, harder to pick up banes. You take damage sometimes if certain things happen. Some of them, the worst ones for a big party, is you lose blessings. So uh, it's just like one thing that makes the scenario harder. And some of them are pretty tame. They're just like a free pass. Others are like an insta-loss. So um, they're, they're, they're all over the place, which I think is fine. Uh, the designers did say this: uh, the higher difficulty modes were intended to be very difficult, so you couldn't just breeze through them. So this is why I will sometimes lose. Um, first of all, the scenario powers might just make, the, make my life hard. Second of all... Um, the wild card powers might cause me to lose. And third of all, I am still playing with five players, which is easier than playing with six, but it's still hard. Oh, goody! We have five fewer blessings uh, in the deck. This I've lost to this many times. I mean, you, you saw in, in my first playthrough in my dream team playing on normal difficulty. Normal difficulty, I went below five blessings more than once. So you really need all the blessings you can get, and this, this is a bad one to get off the gate. Um, if you are playing by yourself on heroic difficulty, it's not a bad idea to just like forfeit the scenario when you get that one and just try for a different one if you want to maximize your odds of winning. Another way that you could uh, play it is you can just like focus on acquiring boons, just spend all your blessings to pick up good boons when you find them, and um, not care about winning. Then you fail, keep the good cards you found, try again with a stronger deck. Um, so that's another strategy. But I'm going to be trying to win every single time. I'm not going to... Um, Automatic. I'm not going to like throw three blessings down to pick up a good boon and basically lose the scenario. So I'm going to be always trying to win. And again, that's not how I'd play it by myself. And if that bothers you, I totally respect that. And you should watch a different set of videos. But just letting you know how it's going to be. For Lama, I'm always going to pick weapon. Because if I pick spell, there's a chance that I'm going to start with my cure and just like not be able to fight anything at all. Okay, so what, what, the, what the fuck do we do here um, to deal with the situation? So... Academy is in, and I think it makes sense to start there. Even though I don't have Azrin, tragically, oh, I'm going to miss that grumpy old gruff uh, getting bajillions of extra explorations here. There is still this on your first exploration. If you don't encounter a spell, you get to explore again. So putting a couple people here um, will just get, get get it cleared out pretty quickly. Sioni and Lem are my um, arcane people, so it makes sense to put them in there. Then for Valeros, the fighter... You kind of want to put him in the woods. Problem with the woods is that it's a wisdom check and his wisdom is a d4, so that, that's a bit short-sighted. You can put him in the waterfront, but the problem is, um, obviously, weapons. Uh, he has a penalty to his weapon die rolls. So I'm going to go ahead and put him in the garrison. There's three monsters there, and there's three weapons there, and he's the best at picking up the weapons. So it just seems like natural for him to go there, even though there's not as many monsters there. sage a bit of a tricky one. So sage can go to the farmhouse, but it has um, a closing requirement of defeating a random monster. Same thing for the waterfront. You can think, oh, well, Seijen will go there because he doesn't care about the weapon penalty. The problem is then you have to save a card, uh, save enough blessings to fight that bandit henchman afterwards, which is tricky for him. 
He could go to the prison, but this is stupid because Charisma Diplomacy is a much more logical place for Sioni and Lem to move after they finish with the Academy. Um, of course, you could also put him on the bridge. His dexterity is a d10. He doesn't have the stealth skill. He's got acrobatics. But I'm probably going to want to put Sioni on the bridge with invisibility once she draws that card. So where exactly the hell does Seijan go? It's, it's tricky to put him somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and put him on the waterfront. Um, and just be really, really careful. I'll probably end up, like, throwing pretty light, um, against the bandit henchman when I encounter him. Maybe I'll save, like, one blessing to use against him. And, um, just hope I, like, roll 3d10s and hit an 8, basically. And then Kira, I'm gonna send to the woods. She's got a couple of armors, so she can use them in the woods. She can, like, bury the armor to take the monster's damage, and then the monster will be banished, because it's the woods. And she's got the best wisdom 6 check in the game, so that's where she goes. All right, now turn order. It's a little bit tricky. I'm going to put um, Valeros at the end, I think. You know, what I should, you know what I should have done? I should have actually put Valeros with somebody and put him last in turn order. So that like I could have put him in the woods, and then he'd be like buffing up Kira's checks. And then like he could just move at the start of his turn. Like give, give everybody basically a free round of D4s. It's an interesting idea. Maybe I'll do that next time. I do want Sioni to go before Lem for sure. Because um, I want her rolling the arcane check to close the academy with him backing her up on a d4 instead of him rolling the arcane check. Because she's a d12 plus 2, he's a d10 plus 1, and she's also getting a d4. So I want her to be more likely to encounter it than him. And I guess we'll put Seijin in the middle because I'm not exactly sure right now of the proper strategy for him versus Kira. Or if that even matters at all. Okay, so now... We start, we only have 24 turns left, oh, that's so bad. All right, so let's see what we got here. Sanctuary, well, if this was Ezrin, um, I would try to pick it up just because it would be an extra exploration. But here, it doesn't seem worth it for Lem to recharge a card and pick this up because this is such a, such a weak card. So I'm just gonna let it fade away. Okay, wow, I picked it up, great. So now the question is, do I explore again? I've got a standard bear. I'm not gonna be using the standard bear for anything else. So I'm just gonna explore with that. The risk is if I find a non-spell, then I would essentially be wasting the next turn's free exploration. Luckily, I did get a spell, and this one is absolutely worth picking up. I will go, go ahead and just uh, recharge a card away. Um, let's get rid of this Amulet of Life. Hopefully, I won't need that. Um, the reason is that oh, I can I can use it right now. It's a divine spell, so it's going to get banished, but I don't care. I can just use it right now, and there's a 25% chance. Actually, no. This is a... Um... Okay, so I, gotta, I, gotta be, I said it wrong. There's a 1 in 8 chance that I get an extra exploration. Because it is a monster other than henchmen or villains. So there's a henchman, there's a regular monster that's 2 out of 8, or 1 in 4. But I would not explore again on the on the henchman. However, um, if I do find the henchman or the villain, that has some qualitative value for me. And if I do find the regular monster, which is still a 1 in 8 chance, it's worth it. I'd rather do that than save that for the fireball. We got another spell. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do with this information is discard a blessing to explore. The reason is that if I leave this um, mending for Lem, he's not going to get a free exploration at the start of at, after completing his first exploration. So I want to kind of get this out of the way. And it's a garbage spell, but I'll just use it as a fireball at some point. So now I've taken three spells out of five. There's now a five and seven chance the top card isn't an academy, isn't sorry, isn't a spell at this academy. So it's like I've the deck was very stacked in uh, the favor of spells. So that increases the odds that Lem will get a free extra exploration, which is always important, but doubly so now that uh, we have five fewer blessings thanks to the wildcard powers. Damn it! Ah, crap. All right, well, this isn't good. Picked up another spell. The good news about this spell, at least, is that um, if I do get lucky and pick it up, I might get an ally that is human and get a free exploration. But it's not worth recharging the sage because... I could just discard the sage for an extra exploration. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll and hope I get a 3 or higher on a d10. Okay, so I'm not super cursed yet. Let's go ahead and play this thing. Hopefully get an extra exploration. I do. All right. So hang on a second. Do I want to explore again? Because if this top card isn't a spell, then Sioni would have gotten an extra exploration anyway. But then again, if it isn't a spell... Um, the card after it might not be a spell either, since, you know, there's, um, 
only one spell left. No, I'm going to hang on to this. I'm going to get an extra exploration somewhere else. The reason is that I want Sioni to have the highest chance possible of running into the henchman because that makes it, this location easier to close. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we got Caltrops. This is actually really good. So I can use this to defeat a, uh, a bandit henchman. Um, so let's get cracking here. We've got an Acolyte. Interesting. So I could... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Acolytes don't have any extra exploration. <laughs> don't care. Get out of here, Acolyte. You can go suck a ball. And I'm going to get rid of this Troubadour because I really don't need him to close the location. And I want him out of my hand so that I can pick up as many blessings as possible. Grindy Low. That's a tough monster. Combat 12 is a bit on the tough side. So let's use our fists. Reveal the Amulet of Mighty Fists and think. Uh, how good is this at hitting a 12? It's not good at all. So much as I hate to do it, I'm going to play a blessing. We'll play one from Kira's hand. And hopefully this will be enough. This is that's actually still a little bit of a loose roll, as evidenced by the fact that I just barely made it. Um, but that'll have to do, I think. So we'll just pause there, and he picks up two blessings, which is good. All right, so Kira does start with an armor, and she got a weapon, which is lucky. Oh yeah, Valeros could pass off weapons to Kira, but she doesn't have weapon proficiency, so we won't be able to. She won't be able to use most of his weapons. So yeah, we'll start doing the Amiri Sila thing after Kira gets weapon proficiency, but there's no point now. Potion of Fortitude. Um, don't need it to close any locations in this scenario, so no need to try to pick this up. Do I keep my Sage? It will help me close the location, so I'm going to discard a Blessing to explore again. Cultist. Mm -hmm. oh, that's bad. The problem with this is we lose a, a Blessing, and it goes into the location deck, causing an extra turn to be lost if I don't pick up the Blessing. So I really need to beat this guy. Fuck. All right, we're just gonna discard the mace. I don't want to. I don't want to play any blessings. And she does have one more weapon in her deck. Hopefully, she can roll a seven. This is a bit of a loose roll to pick up a seven on these three dice. And this is just the worst case scenario. So I lost my weapon. I lose a blessing. It goes into the woods. I, I mean, the cultist still dies, I guess. But all right. Well, since that happened, we're gonna have to discard the sage and keep on going. You've gotta be kidding me! No. <laughs> Another cultist. So he's defeated, but I lost another blessing. Well, this is already going comedically bad. Oh, God. Unless there's some amazingly lucky shit that happens from this point forward, I am in a butt-ton of trouble. Let me tell you, a butt-ton of trouble. That was the wrong time to roll an 8 on a 9 check. Let me tell you. Okay, so we picked up a weapon. So after I inevitably fail this scenario, at least I'm going to have this Warhammer plus 1. So that's good, I guess. Um, let's keep on exploring. Spe oh, wow. okay, that was that was some luck. That was definitely some luck, because Spectre would not have been defeated with a re with my basic weapons, because it needs the magic trait. So that was actually really, really lucky. And do I need, a, I need a, what, a seven on those three dice? A bit of a loose roll. Can't afford to play any blessings on it, so I'm just going to roll for it. Whew, thank God for that one eight there. All right, so we'll recharge it. It's an automatic recharge with this power. And I'm just going to plan to spend all of Valeris' blessings and allies on extra exploration. So we got to get a move on here. Rusted half plate. Not exactly what I needed. I'm going to uh, optionally discard this. We need. I can't, I can't afford to keep that in hand. So we need to just get more of his blessings and uh, allies, and we don't. All right. Well, let's take a look at what's coming up here. Bandit. All right. I kind of wish this were the villain. Obviously, there's only a 1 in 8 chance of that, but if this was the villain, I would actually have a shot at winning the scenario now, because I could play this Sanctuary, put the villain back on top, and be okay. But as it is, unfortunately, um, going to have to recharge a card, draw a replacement card, and this should be a pretty easy kill, because I've got the Sage's Journal, so I only need to roll a 6 on these 4 dice. If I fail this, then I just don't deserve to live. That's not true, it's not my fault, I guess. But anyway, so the bandit uh, goes away, we recharge the spell automatically, and now to close the location. I'm going to make a bit of a loose roll here. All I'm going to do is... Um, oh, shoot, Lem doesn't have anything good to recharge away. He's either recharging away an extra exploration or a combat spell, which he doesn't really want to really do. I don't want to get rid of Thieves' Tools either. There's, there's a lot of um, barriers in this scenario. All right, getting rid of the Sage, I guess. Hopefully he'll get it back at some point. And I'm just hoping I roll a four on these. It's a bit, it's a bit light. It's a bit light. Um, but I, I can't afford to play blessings to close locations because I, I've got off to such a bad start. You know, some of my Hearthstone principles apply here, where um, when you're behind, you have to take risks. So I'm prepared to lose this scenario. I'm just assuming I'm going to lose it. But in order to maximize my odds of not losing it, I am going to take some chances. 
We're going to go to the prison. He does have thieves tools for the two barriers in here, and he's got a good diplomacy check, so I feel like this is a good place for him to go. That's not a bad find. So I do lose my thieves tools, which means if I find the other barrier and it's a bad one, I could end up being in trouble. But essentially that turned these thieves tools into an automatic victory and an extra exploration. I need all the help I can get here. Goblin warrior. All right, let's use my spell. And it's a bit of a loose roll to hope for an eight on these dice. But really there's nothing much easier in the decks than a nine. So if I'm not, if I'm not uh, free rolling this, then what am I? Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. Wow. Tr you know what? Even if I'd played a blessing, I still would have failed. Well, I wouldn't have failed. I would have had like a 50, 50 chance or something of success. Okay. That wasn't great. I would have much rather made that check as it is. I guess I lose three cards and I, and, and a turn could be worse. I suppose could be worse. Sage Ann's trundling around here. Ambush. Well, I'm not even going to try to succeed at this. I'm just going to fight the monster with a penalty. All right, got lucky on my D10. So I get a free extra exploration. And it's Ghosts. Okay, this is actually a little bit of luck going my way. The Amulet of Mighty Fists does add the magic trait. So I will succeed at this thing. And I'm going to play both my blessings. I feel like as tempting as it is to hang on to one to make sure that I've got two for future rounds, um, I need to hit this 12. And indeed, I might have easily failed that check if I hadn't thrown the extra blessing. That's all I can do there. I got another Troubadour for extra exploration. Kira's had some hard times here in the woods. Scimitar is not a basic weapon, but it's not a good weapon, so I don't really care much about picking it up. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and play a Blessing to explore again, because that's what I'm using my, all my Blessings for here. Blessing of Torag. Thank you, Cultist, for putting this in here. Luckily, I don't roll badly. I really need to get good rolls on those D12s to pick up um, these Blessings. Hang on a second. Let me actually discard this. I don't think I'm going to need that non-combat strength thing all right we'll use an inflict and i'm not gonna bother playing blessings because even if i fail this i could have used my chainmail to um, block the damage and make it get banished and i'm just gonna go ahead and play my other blessing so my deck is getting low but i've got a cure in there somewhere so i'll be able to cure myself once i draw that get some blessings back into my deck plague zombie it's an undead so got a pretty decent chance of killing this okay even if i had failed i still had the chainmail so, unfortunately, the bandit did not get shuffled near the top of the woods. I'm already down to half my time, and I've closed one location. One. So it's a bit bit rough and tumble here. Okay. Okay, we get a little bit lucky here. Um, let's get rid of a chainmail. And, okay, we're just going to discard one of these to fight the first one. And next up... It's a little bit of a loose roll that I'm making here. But I'm going to just hope that I can hit a 7 on these three dice. I can't afford to play Blessings. I need them for extra explorations. Okay, thank you, D10 and D8, for doing what you do. Now we get to see what was in the garrison. Um, I don't think I'm going to ever have time to come back to it. Oh my god! Oh jeez! The Deathbane Light Crossbow is in there. Fan favorite weapon. It'd be great for Lem to have it. It's t it's tempting. Okay, so what's going to happen is if I know I'm just going to lose the scenario without any chance of success, I'm going to send my most dexterous people. That would be Sioni, Lem, and Seijin, and just spend any blessings I have to try to pick up that Death Pain Light Crossbow. Um, it's one of the, th the three cards. I don't know which one it is, but uh, it's it's pretty much my best my best chance of success. Okay, so. Sioni doesn't have the invisibility for closing the wooden bridge yet, so what place do I want to have her do? Um, I mean, she's not bad at the prison, uh, and then Lem would be helping her. Somebody needs to go to the farmhouse, but I guess that's really Valeros's jam now that he's closed the uh, garrison. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to the waterfront and help out Seijan. Seijan isn't, again, that ideally suited to the waterfront. She is fine. She's actually one of the best characters for the waterfront, because she has infinite spells. The problem, of course, is that um, Seijin's going to have to discard a card because he's at the location if she closes it, which is unfortunate, but that's life. Okay, Rant Swarm, you have to be really careful. You have to hit at least a 12, not an 8, to actually defeat this thing. So am I willing to spend a Blessing, which is what I'd have to do to really secure my odds? Otherwise, I'm, I'm counting on rolling a 10 on those three dice, which is a, just a bit, a bit, you know, a bit of a tall order. Shoot, I wish Kira had kept her Blessing of Torag that she found, because then she could have recharged it this turn. That would have made it an easier choice. Oh, man. 
Oh boy, when you're behind, take risks. I just gotta roll good on that d12. Alright, so that was, that was a bit of a loose roll, to be sure. She's only got two cards in her discard. I'm gonna keep exploring. I think this is fine to keep on going here. Warlord, very tough enemy. And I don't have a real combat spell anymore. I just have my fireball, which is really bad. I'm gonna have to basically spend a blessing um, to kill this guy. Oh, shit. You know what? I think I'm just gonna pop Sanctuary. Wow, do I really wanna pop it? F it, screw it. Ugh, I hate this. We're gonna do this. This is, this is gonna be tough. I have to spend a blessing. But I, I guess I can roll, if I could roll a 10 on a d12 and two d4s, I should be able to roll a 10 on two d12s and a d6, so we're just gonna roll for it. Okay, that was a little close, but fine. It sucks that I have to lose a blessing on that. But that's all right, so she did what she could. She's got two more allies with two more extra explorations. Lem can get back a lightning touch. That seems kind of stupid, so we'll just not do anything. Spyglass, oh my gosh, that's a really good card. All right, I'm gonna pick it up. It looks like I'm gonna fail this scenario, so I'm just gonna play a blessing here. I'm not gonna play more than one. No! Oh my god, I lost a, I lost an extra exploration for nothing. Ouch. Oh, and I rolled a minimum on my cure. Fuck everything. Jesus. <laughs> All right. So we'll try to recharge the cure. If I fail to recharge, I can pick it back up with my hero power, but I figure I might as well try to recharge it. Do I use the troubadour to explore? I do kind of want to keep him to improve the closing checks. We'll just play a blessing. Siren. Oh, man. Oh, God, that's bad. All right, well, we're losing two more blessings, I guess. Who's playing blessings? Everybody's playing blessings. I could still fail this very easily. Luckily, I rolled a six and a five. Oh, my God. All right, well, that wasn't, that wasn't a good showing. Oh, fuck, I wish I could have gotten that spyglass. Does Sage want to stay here? No, we're going to... Oh, God. He's got a troubadour. I guess that can help close the wooden bridge. He's got Caltrops. I guess they can kill the bandit at the farmhouse if he finds it. So we'll go to the farmhouse. Start making some progress on this place. Masterwork tool is a very good item. All right, I will get rid of a troubadour to increase my odds of picking this thing up. Whew, I thought that was I thought that was Snake Eyes for a second. Do I dare play a blessing? Um, even no, I'm not gonna be able to do anything with it. I'm just gonna stop there. All right, Kira still uh, trundling along through the woods. I think it's time to cure yourself, lady. She rolled a good cure. Wow, we're down to below 10 turns. Uh, I don't even know if it's physically possible for me to win, is it, at this point? No, I've closed two locations, so it is possible to win if I spread everybody out. Um, no, have I only closed one? Oh, no, so Valeros needs to move somewhere. Right, Valeros still has to move, but... Um, if I don't find the villain, like, right now, I guess it is possible that I just win. Trap Passageway. Damn. Um, so, it'd be good to get an extra exploration. Unfortunately, I have to play a blessing to really guarantee it. Oh my god, who's gonna play a blessing? Everybody wants blessings for extra explorations. I guess Lem will play a blessing. He's only got three cards left, but he can cure himself. So we'll do this, hope I can get a seven. Ah, I would have done it with one die. Should have taken a chance. Get an extra explore. Crikey! I cannot find the bandit in here to save my life. And I have to play another blessing on this. I have to. I have no choice. Because otherwise that thing is going to stick and I'm going to have to use it as my first exploration of each turn. Thankfully I didn't roll too bad on that one. But that sucked. So the bandit's hiding in the bottom of the woods. I'm not even sure I'm going to have time to find him at this point. Okay, so Valeros doesn't really want to go to the bridge. That's, he's not going to be able to close that that easily. We'll go to the farmhouse. That's, that's his best place. He wants to be here. He wants to fight lots of monsters. Spectre, no! Ah, oh, fuck! Uh, I don't have. I haven't gotten back my Warhammer yet, so that's just a lost turn. Ah, oh, man, I've had bad history. Every time I find these stupid magic monsters, oh right, wow, it actually sends them away to a different place. Okay, well, we'll explore again. Hopefully, I don't find the bandit henchman. Let's just, just hope I don't find that. All right, the guard. I pick him up. I'm gonna discard him. I don't have time for this. Oh, I have to discard anyway because of the, the heroic power. Very good. I wanted to discard you anyway. Okay. Theoretically, I might still win. It's possible. It's theoretically possible. I need to get these henchmen. Fuck! God, where are the... Ugh, the bandits are just, like, all hiding, like, in crates at the bottom of everything. All right. Well, um, we're going to just go until we find this one. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. So it's the villain... 
Oh, I've used my sanctuary. Oh, why did I do that? I should have hang on, hung on to it. Oh my God. That decision to use up my sanctuary might be what makes me lose. Because if I could have put them back on top, I might have been able to position everybody, discard their hands. Ah, oh, boy. Well, I guess we're just going to have to go for it. So let's take a look at the woods. There's only three cards left here. So if he ends up running into the woods, I mean, how many blessings do I have? Just one, two. I only have two blessings. So clearly I'm going to have to use the, um, the blessings, not on the combat check, but... Um, on the closing checks. So which blessings are the most, or which closing checks are gonna be the hardest? Valeros on the wooden bridge is gonna to be tough. Lem is just gonna to have to roll for it. Um, wait, no, Sage in at the farmhouse is a little bit tough as well. So probably Sage in at the farmhouse and Valeros on the bridge, which means this place with only three cards, if he ends, if the villain ends up running in here, I'm just gonna to have to hope that I get him quickly. Okay, roll to six. Roll to six. All right, let's do a hard one next. Let's do Sage at the farmhouse. That's a pretty scary one. Random monster. It's a shadow. Okay, so Caltrops won't kill it, but I can use the amulet at least for the magic trait and have a chance of killing it. I recharge my blessing. And actually, okay, I have to think about this. Hang on a second. Hang on. So what's interesting here is that what we have right now is the blessing of Gorum, which is two dice to a uh, combat strength check. So it might actually be better not to use my hero power and instead to just recharge it for two extra d6, right? It's better to roll 3d6 than 2d10, isn't it? Um, 3d6 is 10 and a half, 2d10 is 11, but it's less variance with the sixes. And does Siona use her blessing on this? Well, no, because we need we need a blessing on the, on the bridge for Valeros. Although, the farmhouse actually is more... Well, no, the bridge and the farmhouse both have a lot of cards left, so I don't really want him running into those locations. Hmm. I don't want him running into those locations, because if they if, if he does, then I basically lose. Valeros does have a troubadour, so he'll be rolling a d8 plus a d6 to hit a 6. It's a bit loose. Is it as loose as this? Well, let's see. d8 plus a d6 is an average of 4.5 plus 3.5, which is 8, to hit a 6. What am I rolling here? I'm rolling... 10 and a half plus two and a half, which is 13 to hit a 13. That's definitely the looser of the two rolls. So this is where the last blessing goes. So this is why, I mean, it would have been good to have um, Sanctuary. Right now, a bunch of characters are holding cards that aren't blessings. If I could have kept Jubrail on top of the waterfront with the Sanctuary, then um, I could have prepared for a better turn. Yeah, I could have won this. If I lose, I've only myself to blame. She could have just like buried the Amulet of Light, or burned the amulet of life as a fireball or even the thieves tools really anything would have been better well let's stop i get a 13 here ah oh, that looked bad okay i guess the blessing made the difference and now this is the scary moment valeros every we're all out of blessings all he's got is a d8 and a d6 to hit a six and if the villain goes in here my odds of winning are very very small no oh god damn it oh that was rough well i had to get unlucky somewhere so it's still possible. It's still possible. The problem is that um, I'm only, I'm only going to have two characters pile driving the bridge. Only two. It's um, and, and the other three have to stay where they are. So it's just bad. Now let's recharge a couple of cards because I have to. Can I find a combat spell? I can't. So we're going to have to use Sage's Journal, and I'm going to burn the Sage's Journal actually. Wait, what? Um, okay, I don't exactly understand what's happening here. Wait, I don't want to discard it. No, 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 hang on. Where did my... I should I should have a d6, shouldn't I? Yeah, because I'm using a fireball. I should definitely... That's a weird-ass bug. Crap, this bug is actually screwing me up a lot. Because I should be able to reveal it for a d4 to the check to defeat a henchman or a villain and then discard it to the fireball. Shouldn't I? Unless I'm really misunderstanding the rules. What happens if I undo everything? I'm rolling a d4 for some reason as my base. Oh, yeah, it's because I'm doing strength. So I add a d4. Okay, and now fireball? Nope, it's a bug. It's it's weirdly bugged out. I'm not getting my d6 for the fireball. So that's kind of an interesting little bug there. Let's see if we can reset this. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do then is I'm going to discard a troubadour. 
and then reveal the Sage's Journal. Because so I don't want to lose this check. And this is this is a bit of a loose roll as it is. If that D12 hadn't rolled so high, I would have failed. Crap. Five, Valeros rolled a 5 to hit a 6. If I just had one more Blessing, I would have played a Blessing on Valeros' check. And then I would have made it. So, God. Alright, well, I'm going to get rid of that. I need to find, where's my invisibility? Don't I have invisibility? There it is. So now she can at least close the wooden bridge. Problem is, everybody needs to stay where they are. So Valeros and Sione are the only ones who um, get to actually explore the wooden bridge. And let's see. Yeah, they're both going to get one turn each, basically, to do that. So unless Lem finds the henchman right now, he's actually not going to have an another turn anyway. And he actually does find the henchman. All right, so credit to that, I guess. All right, so um, Force Missile. I just have to hope this works. And now the Charisma Diplomacy 6. Shoot, didn't I have a Troubadour? Shoot, I, did I use the Troubadour for something stupid? I must have. I'm, I absolutely must have used it for something stupid. So this is actually kind of a little bit sad because now... I have to hit a 3 on a 10, so it's like an 80% chance of success. Um, you know, it doesn't make enough of a difference. Like, basically, if he succeeds at this, let's see, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He's gonna, we're going to get one more extra exploration on the bridge, but I need all the blessings I can get. If she spends a blessing to make this check, that's a blessing she's not spending to explore. So I'm just going to take my 80% odds. Okay, so it's close. So he's going to get one more turn. So basically, I'm going to get three turns to pile drive the wooden bridge. And that's it. All right, Sage Ann stole the farmhouse. Is there any point for him to explore the farmhouse? Um, no, because he couldn't really kill an enemy. What I'm going to have to do is I'm actually going to um, maximize my odds of being able to defeat that random monster. Because if, uh, if Sione hadn't had to play her blessing to help him, then she would have had a blessing to give to Valeros. Okay, that was a good draw, so he's pretty much in an ideal situation. Does it make any difference for Kira to explore? She's not going to get another turn after this because of the heroic power and because of the two cultists. If it hadn't been for the two cultists in the woods that I, I lost to, we would have had six turns left, and she would have had one more turn to explore. But she can't leave this place, so I guess we'll just explore and see if I can pick up a good boon. That's not a good boon, and I can't pick it up anyway. Oh, I could go for the Deathbane Light Crossbow. I could just say, F it, and go for the Deathbane Light Crossbow in the garrison. Well, what do we got here? If I do find Jubrail, then we have a chance of winning. So 1 in 10 odds. Here we go, Giant Gecko. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but it is what it is. And at least it clears out a card for Sione. Now, the new, nice thing is if we find the Bandit Henchman, which is possible, 2 out of 9 chance of finding the Bandit Henchman, then... um. As long as Sione makes the check to close, which she will because she has invisibility, we will be left with the bandit on the bottom. Okay, so he didn't get any blessings, which is unfortunate. She only has two extra explorations, which is unfortunate, but still, three explorations. It's possible. It's possible that I find what I need. Magic leather armor. Alrighty. That's actually good. It is good. It's good to pick that up so that my armor wielders can get a um, magic armor in their hand. Um, let's play Troubadour to keep going. Got a Blessing. This is actually really important to pick up, because I can get an extra exploration. But, nope! Not a chance of that. Let's play another Blessing. Acolyte. Fuck me! Wow! So, the Bandit and the Henchman are buried far down, and this ally does not grant extra explorations. So we'll discard her ass, and um, unfortunately, that's all I can do. I can't do anything else. So does she have any Blessings in here? Nope. So there's really not even any point to her um, discarding cards. What this means is that right now, it's all going to come down to Lem. He does have four extra explorations, though. Four. He's got four of them. So, why not? I mean, I could go get that Deathbane Light Crossbow, but four extra explorations. That's got to count for something. Let's do this shit. All right, so I need to hit the Bandit. Well, the Bandit would be less than ideal. I'd much rather find the villain. Archer. Right. I really hope I make my 80% chance of picking this up so I can get a free extra explore. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, I have to discard a card. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, we're going to discard the weapon, I guess. The spell is better at fighting than the weapon is. So now, um, actually, I could have kept her. It would have um, added a d4 to, her, to his uh, crossbow check. Well, now that I don't have the crossbow, we're going to keep on trucking. 
Werewolf? Jesus. Okay, I have to actually think very carefully. No, no, there's nothing to think about. I gotta go for it. Just sucks that this was above the henchman and the villain. At least I have an extra d4 for my friend Valeros. But I'm gonna play a blessing because I think it's a little bit loose to not do that here. 24. I guess I would have made it without the blessing. Could have taken a risk, I suppose. And now he's fighting bare-fisted. Maybe I shouldn't have discarded that crossbow. How am I supposed to win? Okay, what? I'm such an idiot. How am I supposed to? Oh, I'm so stupid. I should have discarded the spell and kept the crossbow. How am I supposed to kill the villain without a uh, without a weapon in hand? Oh, Jesus, I'm an idiot, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, we're going to try it. I mean, I think seijan has got a uh, blessing. Oh, wait, wait. What, what if I get a combat? Oh, my God. There's a 50-50 chance that I pick up a... Um, combat spell here come on come on come on all right all right i gotta think though i gotta think carefully because if i spend the combat spell here oh yeah the villain is gonna make me recharge a card and then i can pick up another combat spell all right all right we, we're gonna do this we're gonna do this on the backs of the scenario rules sage Ann can't afford to spend any more blessings he has to keep them to close the farmhouse so we roll all right and try to recharge so now we see that the villain's in the bottom. And it sucks that I only have one turn left because the next person up is Seijan. But if he comes over to kill the villain, then the farmhouse is wide open. So we're just going to have to... Well, first of all, I have to get lucky here because if I fail this, then I just lose. Okay, so I did get lucky enough. So now the location closes except for the villain. Um, I spend a card to explore. Do I get to draw two cards? Do I get to draw two cards uh, after recharging none? Hmm, I don't know. Well, I can't afford to play a blessing on this, can I? Because then Seijin is only going to have 2d10 and a d4 to close his farmhouse. Um, although that's got to be higher odds than Kira rolling a 6 or higher. Yeah, we'll play one blessing here to secure that close. Damn it. All three dice by themselves would have done it. Then Seijin has to close the farmhouse. Please be something easy. All right, that is about as easy as I could have possibly hoped for. So it's still a pretty loose roll, but this is all I can do. Okay. And now, does Lem get to draw cards? No, he doesn't. No! Oh, <laughs> I'm so stupid. God. All right, well, I'm going to lose this scenario. It was a very good learning experience. Lem should have held on to his crossbow. He doesn't get to draw cards. Um, and there's no way that he can get 2d4 to come up as a 10. So... Should have gone for that Deathbane-like crossbow, I guess. Well, um... Fuck. I guess now... Oh, Seijan doesn't actually have cards. So Seijan... Well, there's a 1 in 3 chance he's going to find that Deathbane crossbow at the garrison. So I might as well take those 1 in 3 odds. And, okay, he actually does find it, so I have to get lucky again. I have to roll a 10 on 2d10. Oh my god. All right, that was that was very very lucky. So I do have some good luck to compensate my bad skill. And now because of those cultists, I'm out of time and out of luck. Well, anyway, that that was that was a nail biter. I hope you enjoyed it everybody. Please like and or subscribe if you did. I apologize for making two critical mistakes there. One was that I used sanctuary as a fireball for Sioni instead of holding on to it. If I had not done that, I could have scouted the villain, left him on top of the deck. Had everybody discard cards to get a bunch of blessings and then made all the closing checks. I was off by one from winning the scenario, but I wouldn't have needed that lucky roll in the first place if I had just played correctly. The other thing is, I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea for Lem to get rid of his crossbow. Clearly, after he used up his last combat spell, he was going to be out of combat spells. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and uh, rebuild our decks. So, obviously, I don't need any of this crap. Magic leather armor... I don't have any light armor wielders, interestingly. All of my light armor people are in the other party, but it's still worth it to have a magic one here just so that they can um, recharge it. In fact, I'm going to give it to Valeros because Kira is in the woods and she's going to be bearing her armors anyhow. Warhammer plus one is nice. Let's get rid of this mace. And card I don't need. Sioni doesn't need this acolyte. Archer's actually a potential keeper. Help someone his crossbow checks. Yeah, I'll do that over a sage. Charm person's kind of like an extra exploration. Is it worth getting rid of a combat spell? Sure, I'll do it for now. 
Seijin has a death band like cross, but let's not forget to give that to our hero Lem here. And the masterwork tools. Okay, so um, does he really want two thieves tools? I think somebody could take two thieves tools. Maybe not him though. Maybe thieves tools is generally just better than a crowbar. Then again, uh, why don't I just give her tools instead of caltrops? All right, let's take a quick look at view all. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Anybody want a sage? Probably not. All right, so that's that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and will pardon me for my errors. And uh, tomorrow we'll be back to try that again. So I'll see you guys soon. Take care.